Hey, I don't know about you, but uh, I love working with the control room in Cubase, and not only when mixing, but also when recording. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to share with you my top reasons why I love to work with the control room when recording in Cubase. Hey, what's up, my friend? The Crystal Lim here from Mixdown Online. Before we start this one up, I just want to make a quick announcement. Since we're talking about recording in Cubase, I just want to let you know that I have a new course coming out shortly. So click the link down below. Make sure you're on my mailing list so you get notified when it comes out. Okay, now let's jump in Cubase. Now, if you work with Cubase Pro and you don't work with the control room yet, you should. I just love this tool and it's very useful when mixing and also when recording. Let's start by looking how you can activate the control room on Cubase Pro. You click F4 on your keyboard, open the audio connections window, and on the far right, there's the control room tab. Uh, you just need to activate it, and this will take full control of the output of your Cubase. And from this point, you'll be able to um, add yourself a monitor mix uh, to feed your studio monitors, a Q mix, like four stereo Q mixes, which I'm going to get into in a moment, and also a talkback. You can also create yourself a separate headphone output, which I actually don't do on my side. I just use the main monitor output with the control room. Then once you create your first monitor uh, output, you just route the uh, left and right output channels to your output of the sound interface, and that's it. And you're going to do this instead of setting that up into the output tab, okay? So you're not going to need the output uh, channels anymore. More uh, set up into the uh, the output uh, tab uh, only from the control room. Okay, so that's simple. And then on the right zone uh, that you need to uh, to activate by clicking on the right zone icon on the top right, and you'll have access to the control room. Uh, okay, now the first reason why I love to work with the control room when recording in Cubase is the fact that you can set up Q mixes when working with another musician, or even when working by yourself. That can also be useful. So the, the way you set that up again, you go back into your uh, audio connections, a control room again, and you just create yourself a cue mix. Uh, let me add a second one. I already have one uh, right here, and that cue mix is routed to output three and four out of my sound interface. I'm not going to route it the second one. I'm just going to use it as an example. Uh, but basically, you can choose any available outputs from your interface and then connect the outputs to a headphone amp or a small console to feed to the musician you work with. OK, so now I have my two Q mixes right here on top that are available on the top of the control room. If I look at Q1 right now, I'm sending my mix, my control room mix uh, to Q1, but I can also customize a mix straight to Q1, and this is how I like to use it. So I'm going to select Q1. Uh, then what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the channels. I have like a quick recording here um, that I'm going to uh, feed to Q1. So, you know, let's say I'm going to work on a drummer, a drummer um, you know, monitor Q mix, and I'm going to select all of my channels from that session. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to right click on my tab, click on from selected mixer channels. And the first I'm going to enable the Q sense. And now look at that. I don't see any Q tab. So by default, you're going to need to activate that tab. So I'm going to go right here on the top where I have racks, go down and make sure the Q sends is checked on. And there you go. I have my Q tab. Now all my cues are activated. Okay. If I go back here, I can disable them also, but let's re enable them. Okay. Now I have all of my cues, uh, Q1s from those selected channels active. I'm going to go a step further, go from selected mixer channels again. And now I'm going to use the current mix levels. And this is going to set up the levels going into that QMix 1, um, the same as I have on my mix console. And there you go. I'm going to do the same for the panning. Use current pan settings. There you go. So that is an easy way to set up a Q mix, like a balanced Q mix, 
to a musician when recording in Cubase. And you can actually customize that to the taste of the musician, uh, which is quite nice. So for example, if uh, I'm recording a drummer, I'm setting Q1 uh, for a drum monitor mix. What I'm gonna do is probably, I'm gonna bring down all the other channels from his mix. Okay, again, I'm gonna select the channels I wanna bring down, make sure quick link is selected, and then I'm just gonna bring down the amount of level from all the other instruments except the drums and the bass. Usually drummers, they like, like myself, we like to record drums by hearing the bass a lot, you know, uh, and kick and snare, of course. And from that point, I can customize even deeper if I want to and rebalance the drum mix itself. I can do it uh, uh, by just turning up or down those individual channels. So it gives me a lot of flexibility on the, um, the mix I'm sending to a musician I'm recording straight from Cubase. Now, something I like to do also, instead of sending uh, the signal from all the tracks uh, to a Cumix, uh, is just to, uh, to create a stereo bus for all the instruments, like I have right here, uh, by creating a group channel and just sending that signal to a Cumix. Okay, that has the same balance that I actually have on my end. And then let's say I'm recording uh, this vocal here on this vocal channel. In that case, I would send uh, the output of that channel to the main stereo out channel of Cubase. And uh, then same for uh, this uh, group channel. Uh, we'll also go to the same output of Cubase. So this way I have the music using this uh, Qmix. Let me bypass the other Qmixes. And then this uh, Qmix, which is the vocal, if I'm monitoring through Cubase, uh, which also uh, will go to Q1. And I can also, you know, decide to, uh, to use group channels instead uh, per instrument group, like I do when mixing, uh, but I can create the same and just use these channels to send a Qmix uh, to, uh, to a musician. You know, and that also uh, can be a very good way to go. Now, something else that I like to work with when it comes to control room when recording in Cubase is the fact that you can monitor a cue, and that is very useful. Uh, for example, let's just have a quick listen. So we're basically monitoring the general mix that I'm getting through my speakers. What I can do now is to select Q1 and listen to what the drummer is actually hearing in this case. If I go back to my mix. Now, you notice that the drums and bass are a bit louder on the Q1 mix, and I'm actually able to listen uh, to that Q1 and make some adjustments if I need to. Uh, and that is also very useful if I want to, uh, to set up a Q mix for myself, even if I'm recording on my own. Uh, in this case, I don't need to route the Q1 to an external output. I can just leave that blank and just use uh, the Q mix internally within Cubase and just make myself a different mix when recording guitars or bass uh, and then go back to my general mix, you know? Um, and that can be useful. It's not something that I do a lot, but I know a lot of people that tend to use this feature when recording on their own, which again, can be very useful. Now, another powerful feature we have in Cubase uh, with the control room is the talkback integration. And that is actually very, very cool. Uh, okay, so um, I'm gonna set up this microphone right here. So this one, uh, I'm gonna use this mic uh, as a talkback microphone, okay? So I have uh, the microphone connected on channel one out of my interface. Let's go straight into the control room. Talkback is right here and it's uh, uh, routed to the microphone one input. And then I'm going to check if I have some signal coming on. Now from the Q1 tab, I'm going to need to activate talkback and I have the level that I can adjust, uh, which is pretty nice. Now I don't, I still don't have any signal coming on. So what I need to do is to activate the talkback down below. And when I activate it, there you go. Now I have some signal coming into Q1 out of this talkback microphone. 
uh, which is quite nice. So that makes it very easy to communicate with the musician I'm recording. Uh, and I can also set that one up to a key command, which I have on my side from my computer keyboard and also set up from my monogram CC, which is again, very useful. So to do so, just click on the uh, on edit, go down to key commands and look for talk back on and off right here. And actually, you know, it's under the control room folder and you'll see it right here. Set that up to a keyboard shortcut and you're good to go. Another very cool feature we have within the control room is to send a metronome signal to a QMix. And again, it works very well and gives you a lot of control and flexibility. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna activate the metronome click and uh, let me just... Let me activate the click. Okay, so now I have the click on my side and I also have it on uh, on Q1. I can uh, bring, bring it up or down as far as the volume goes. And if I monitor Q1, I can still hear it. And the cool thing is that you can set that up on a monitor mix and turn it off on your end. And it's not gonna matter, you know? So you just bring down your click level on your side and you're still gonna be able to send the level, the click to the musician that is uh, uh, that is using a Q mix. Very, very practical, very useful. So, you know, uh, the control room is a powerful tool. And again, if you don't use it, you should use it. It's just amazing to work with. And it's something unique to Cubase. I'm not sure any other DAW has this control room concept. Um, and I kind of like it. Now, one last thing that is pretty cool also um, that I actually never used so far. Uh, there's the insert tab, you know. Uh, I can use a bunch of uh, plugins from my monitor mix, which I do on my end, but I can also do so on every Q mix, okay? So that can be useful. I don't do it on my end, but if you need to, uh, uh, to uh, tweak the EQ out of the signal going into Q1 or one of the Q mixes, you can add up to eight plugins on every Q, okay? That can be useful. So again, those are the type of features that makes the control room a powerful tool when mixing in Cubase, but when recording in Cubase also. Uh, and I use the control room all the time, whether I'm mixing or recording. So if you're not using, again, the control room, make sure you try it out if you work with Cubase Pro. So those are the features and reasons why I love to work in the control room when recording in Cubase. Now, your turn. I want to know if you do use the control room when recording in Cubase, and if so, let me know which feature or features you love to work with when recording in Cubase. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to the channel if you're not already and also to click that link below. Leave me your email so you get notified when my new course is gonna come out. Until next time, take care and see you.